A great plan. Two on one. Uh -oh. Three on one make it. Can Niagara steal this? Redeker scores. I don't believe it. Ten seconds remaining. A three on one. And just like that, the 11 seeded Purple Eagles of Niagara stole game one of this series from RIT 5 to 4 as we welcome you inside the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology for RIT Sports Zone's presentation of Tiger Hockey tonight. Mike Rotolo and the Tigers facing elimination in game two of this best of three Atlantic hockey first round series with Niagara. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pre-game live presented by Taylor the Builders. There's plenty to get to over the next half hour, including full highlights and reaction from game one, plus interviews with both head coaches as we lead up to face off at 7.05. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and if you're a Tiger fan, boy, you're probably still in shock over what transpired here last night. Niagara came in having lost 20 of its last 21 games and somehow scored three times in the final four minutes to steal game one from RIT and what head coach Wayne Wilson called the worst collapse in his 18 year tenure. Let's recap it for you. If you did miss it last night, RIT and Niagara game one of the Atlantic Hockey Playoffs. Early on, Mike Rotolo taken out by Johnny Curran as he came out to challenge on the play. Rotolo's mask would come off, but he would be okay and he would remain in the game. Tigers' best period was the first. Max Mikowski, the tremendous feed to Jordan Peacock, gets his fifth goal on the year. RIT went up. 1-0. Later in the period, Adam Brubaker puts it off the backboards. Danny Smith is there for the rebound past Jackson Tightrobe, who was caught out of position, and like that, it was 2-0 RIT. Under two minutes to play, Matt Apt. The shot doesn't go. Liam Karens is there for the rebound. RIT led 3-1 after one period of play. Second period, Niagara takes advantage of a delayed penalty call. Steven Pietrabon scores as Niagara trailed by one. After two periods, head coach Dave Burkholder said, oh, we're in a position to steal this one. Midway through the third, RIT pads its lead. Matt Apt to Eric Brown, his team leading 16th on the year. RIT had a two-goal lead at that point, but all oh, the wheels came off after that. Under four minutes to go, RIT on the power play, trying to seal it. Vinny Muto had other ideas. Beats Rotolo with the wrister, the shorthanded goal. All of a sudden, it was 4-3. RIT under a minute to play. Niagara puts Tykrobe. Johnny Curran, they pulled him. Johnny Curran to Flex the puck up and over Rotolo and off the post. And can you believe it? We were tied at four. After drawing a penalty, Tigers on the power play late, but Adam Brubaker turns it over. Niagara three on one the other way. And there's the game winner with just 10 seconds remaining. Niagara snaps a 12 game losing streak. They take game one, five, four. What happened in the, in the waning seconds? There? I uh, tried to go back give a pass to our partner, Kernsey there. Yeah. And I just felt kind of a hold maybe on my arm, a little bit questionable. And I know I was pretty frustrated, but I'll have to go back and look at the tape to watch it over again. Is the room stunned at this point, just trying to comprehend what happened? I think a little bit. You know, we took the foot off the gas at 4-2. Uh, maybe thought we had it a little easy, had it in the bag, but came back to bite us. Yeah, I think we definitely got a little bit complacent uh, in the third period there. We got up 4-2 and we thought we had it, and in a playoff game, uh, you never have it until the final buzzer goes. Uh, it's crazy how, how quick things can change in a playoff game. A snap of a finger, and it's, uh, it's a tie game. And So, yeah, it's, uh, tomorrow's game, we got to make sure we're playing more desperate uh, for the full 60 minutes. Um, make sure we're blocking shots, doing what it takes to win, because uh, you get a two-goal lead, it's, you can get comfortable, it's dangerous. We know they're going to bring it, and... Um... They have a chance to move on. Uh, this is a new season for them, new life, and they clearly show that they got some jump tonight. We need to match that. And after we match that, we need to up the intensity and go out and get the win uh, so we can play on Sunday. So with the loss, RIT's eight-game Atlantic Hockey playoff winning streak is over. The Tigers outshot Niagara 39-22. to Both teams combined to go 0 for 9 on the power play. But as you saw, the difference was on Niagara. The goal on the delayed penalty and two shorthanded goals. The last time RIT gave up two shorties, January 4th, 2013 at St. Lawrence. That's a game they won last night. Unfortunately, they did not. Well, after a crushing defeat like that, head coach Wayne Wilson said it's now up to the guys in that Tiger locker room to react. With more on tonight's matchup, Sports Zone's 
John Natulio joins us now with the head coach, Wayne Wilson. John? All right, thank you, Kevin. Wayne, how do you overcome such a devastating loss last night? What was the message to your team last night? Well, last night we had a meeting right after the game. We thought we'd uh, go over really our last 11 minutes is where we thought we, uh, uh, you know, we got the two-goal lead with nine minutes left. But 11-minute mark, we got a little sloppy. Nine-minute mark, we get a two-goal lead. And every time we got a two-goal lead is, I think, was when we put our, our foot off the gas and we just kind of relaxed and got comfortable. And uh, I think that's what happened. But we thought it was important to have a meeting last night after the game, go over it last night, put it to bed, and then uh, that way we can uh, today concentrate on, you know, what do we need to do to win tonight. And so today's focus was all about what we had to do tonight and nothing about last night. So I think uh, from that standpoint, it was the best thing we, sh we could have done. Uh, you don't want to dwell on it, but you've got to learn your lesson and you've got to move on. And now it's single game elimination for us, which uh, we're going to face uh, down the road. We just got to get this to a third game. What do you do tonight? Niagara's got to be playing with a, a world of confidence. What does your team need to do tonight? Yeah, well, we've, you know, I thought we did a lot of good things last night, too. I mean, uh, we doubled them up in shots. We created a lot of offense. Our, our penalty killing was good. Our power play was not good last night. Besides giving up two short of goals, it wasn't real good uh, uh, on the offensive standpoint. But I thought we still did a lot of good things uh, controlling the play. Uh, we forced a lot of dump-ins. Uh, at one point, I think with uh, uh, under uh, uh, 10 minutes left, they still only had 15 shots on goal. So, I mean, that's pretty good to our whatever 30, 30 plus. So, uh, tonight we got to do the same and just play with a little bit more urgency or play for the full 60 minutes is probably the better term. Is we got to play for 60 minutes and uh, uh, we got to get a, maybe a little puck luck. I mean, we, you know, we've got to be careful of uh, in a single game elimination of uh, penalties or odd man rushes or a hot goaltender. Are you concerned that? mental fabric of devastating loss last night could linger into the early moments of tonight's game? Well, we're going to find out that. I, I think we're past that, but you don't know. Well, we'll see what it is. We, we have certainly give, given them new life uh, and some confidence because I don't think we gave them a, a whole lot up until maybe the 10-minute the mark of the third period. I, they didn't play, in, in our uh, view, uh, an inspired game or a desperate game. Uh, uh, but we gave them the opportunities, and in our minds, we lost the game more than they won it. Uh, credit to them, but uh, now we've got our backs against the wall, and we've got to do a lot better job tonight. Well, it's not the first time in the playoffs you've had your team uh, with their backs to the wall, and we've seen RIT certainly come back with a preview now with Niagara. Let's send it over to Stacy Pension. Stacy. Yeah, thanks, John. Joined by Niagara head coach Dave Burkholder. You know, you. Anything can happen in the playoffs. Anything can happen in the postseason. It's a clean slate, and we had a good game last night. Uh, you had a little bit of puck luck, but you guys fought for that win. You didn't give up, and you stole the game like you said you could. Yeah, I, we said we talked about that after the second period, and uh, you know when they scored to make it 4-2 with nine to go, uh, there was there was no no one getting down on our bench. We didn't quit, as you say, and and that's a sign of a of a young team that's maybe maturing, but. Uh, Obviously, we won the goalie matchup. I thought our goalie was a bit better than their goalie, and, and we got a couple lucky bounces, too. Obviously, that's a factor. So, But, you know, for game one, we're going to take it. What's your mind frame going into tonight's game, and what do you expect from RIT? Obviously, they're a little angry. Yeah, you know, from our side of the ledger, we think we can play a lot better. Um, we didn't do a good job of taking care of the puck. Um, so we're, we're hoping to play a lot better, but I know they're champions over there. They're going to give us their best game. Thanks for your time, Coach. We'll talk to you later on in the game. Thank you very much. Back to you. All right, Stacy. thanks so much. Well, it was almost a complete sweep for the lower seeds in Atlantic hockey last night. Niagara wasn't the only one to pull off the upset. Sacred Heart scored four third-period goals to take game one at Bentley. Mercyhurst survived after blowing a three-goal lead. They beat AIC 4-3. If all three teams sweep tonight, Niagara would play top-seeded Canisius. Air Force would host Sacred Heart, and Mercyhurst would travel to Army. We will see. Well, still to come here on the program, RIT women's hockey head coach Scott McDonald will join us live on set. Plus, Mike Rotolo talks about what it's meant to play for his hometown team the last four years. It's all next. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. here on RIT Sports Zone pregame live. The hero from last night for Niagara, number eight, Sam Reniker, who scored shorthanded with just 10 seconds remaining to give the Purple Eagles a 1-0 series lead over RIT. They go for the sweep 
here tonight. Well, Greece native Mike Rotolo is in his final season between the pipes for RIT. Rotolo, like many kids, grew up dreaming about playing for his hometown team and hopes to go out with a third straight Atlantic Hockey Championship. Like most hockey players, Mike Rotolo fell in love with the game at a very young age. Started around four, I believe. Back then, when you were a kid, you used to play, uh, the thing was called Thunder Bears, so I played at Lake Chorice Arena down in Greece. And uh, everybody got their chance to rotate in as the goalie, so I was forward for a while, and then when my chance came to play goalie, uh, I finished the game and I just fell in love with it. I told my dad, I was like, hey, I think that's the position I want to play. Pass down low. Oh, what a save by Rotolo! As his interest in hockey grew, the Greece native became a regular at Ritter. Well, as a kid, I think the thing that drew me in was the atmosphere. You don't see that at pro games, really. You don't have a student section like that. You don't have the band playing. It's really, and at Ritter, everything was right on top of you, so it was very loud in there, and I just loved the atmosphere. And Did you have a favorite RIT player back then? Jared Michael was a, arguably one of the best goalies to ever play here at RIT and has become a good friend of mine over the years, just knowing him through hockey. And we still talk to this day, even though he's coaching in UMass. But, yeah, when I started to get older and then, you know, started to get to juniors and really understand the sport, I started to think, well, I would love to play in my hometown for this team and be able to wear that Tiger logo on my chest would be something amazing. Breakaway goal going in, the shot, and Rotolo coming up big. And you told your dad uh, way back when that you wanted to be a Tiger, but that almost didn't happen, did it? No, I was uh, committed to St. Lawrence University. I guess fortunately for me and the situation I'm in now, they had a coaching change and, you know, I was committed by a previous coach and they had that coaching change and I thought it was in my best interest to decommit from there and just see what other pathways open and luckily I found my way here. Rotolo has been a big part of RIT's success and will be key to a potential conference three-peat. But this Rochesterian has his sights set on college hockey's ultimate prize. You know, to be able to win back-to-back -back titles is pretty special. No team in RIT's ever done that and we're looking for our third in a row this year. And I think our main goal, we've talked about before, that I think this is a pretty open year in college hockey. Any team can win a national championship, and I think we have a team in this locker room that can compete for a national championship. And, you know, we got to go out and play and perform, but at the end of the day, when we, when we play Tiger hockey and play our best, I think we have a really good shot to play with any team in the country. This season may be the end of the road for Rotolo's college career, but make no mistake, he has every intention of playing on. Whenever the journey does come to an end here at RIT, I, I want to move forward and continue hockey for as long as you can because it's not a sport you can play forever. And, you know, the only opportunity is directly out of college. So I'll take this journey for as long as it'll take me. And then if I have to, I'll, I'll end the journey and start a career in my uh, criminal justice field. But hockey is my main priority and it's something I want to do for as long as I can. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see a lot more of Mike Rotolo and company beyond tonight's game here. Well, the RIT women's hockey team won just six games during the regular season, but Scott McDonald's group made some noise in the first round of the CHA tournament on Thursday night after knocking off Penn State. Last night they were in the conference semifinals against second-seeded Syracuse. Tigers went 0-3-1 against the Orange during the regular season. Early on, Jenna DeYoung kept them in it making one of her 38 saves on the night right here. But eventually Syracuse would overwhelm the Tigers in the second period. Heather Schwartz with the rebound and she puts it in to give the Orange a one nothing lead. Just 135 later, Kelly Roswell gets the turnover and scores unassisted. Syracuse would add two more in the third as the Tigers get shut out in the conference semifinals by a final of four to nothing. So it was top seeded Robert Morris and second seeded Syracuse in the CHA championship this, this afternoon. And the nationally ranked Colonial shut out the Orange two nothing to win their first title since 2012. Robert Morris will represent CHA in the NCAA tournament. Joined now by the head coach of the RIT women's hockey team, Scott McDonald. You, you had a tough season. You make some noise in the tournament. What positives can you take away from this season, coach? Um, you know what, just getting the, the first win uh, the quarterfinal win against yeah. Penn State, uh, you know, that's uh, that's our first playoff win in a couple years because we are, uh, went down 0-2 against those guys last year. So for the younger girls on the team, the freshmen and sophomores, that's their first victory at the, in the playoffs and uh, a much-needed monkey off our backs. Sure. And, uh, you know, then you take on a, a really solid Syracuse squad and 
Um, you know, I remember our first year in Division One, we lost in the semis to Syracuse again. And uh, maybe we can start that cycle all over again and yeah. uh, make a run next year in the following year. Well, you're familiar with these teams. Robert Morris crowned the champion, the nationally ranked team, kind of yep. at the top of the league all year long. What do you expect from them in the NCAA tournament? Can they make some noise? Yeah, we hope so. You know, you, they wanna, we want them to represent the league well, and they've played uh, tremendously well all year. And, uh, you know, they're highly ranked for a reason. You know, they have a, a solid goaltender that, was, uh, that showed her skills today, shutting out a very talented Syracuse team. Yeah. Um, and they've got a couple of big guns up front that can just put the puck away. And uh, their top line can play with anyone in the country. And um, we're hoping for the best, and we'll be cheering them on, uh, representing the CHA. So your game ends last night. When you hear the men lose, <laughs> were you more surprised when you heard they lost or found out how they lost? Um, how they lost. Yeah. You know, um, I, I think you look at the seedings, and it goes to show the cliche, throw the seeds out the window in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, with the men, you're a two-time champ back-to-back, -back, and regardless of where you're sitting, people are gunning for you. And people want to knock you off. Uh, and Niagara has nothing to lose, and, and they showed that. And uh, You're looking at that type of game, and okay, yep, four minutes to go, you're up by a couple, and it, the play's not, the game's not over till it's over. <laughs> you know, and at this time of year, you have seniors on the team that maybe their college careers are coming to an end. They don't want it to be their last period or their last game. And, and give Niagara credit for just kind of hanging in there and making, uh, stealing, I think, stealing the first game yeah. of the series. You've been in those situations before. What do you expect from RIT here tonight? What do we find out about them? I think they rebound, you know, come right at Niagara hard, and uh, hopefully they get on them early and quickly and then put them away. You know, don't even make it close. And um, I think it's a great wake-up call this early in the playoffs. And, yeah. you know, thank God it, it is a 2 or 3 right now. Yeah. Um, you know, a hard lesson learned last night of not being able to put a team away. And, 10 seconds left in the game, put teams away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll bounce back. Wayne's a great coach, and he'll have them uh, sharp and ready to go and fired up. Yeah. Puck drop. Niagara grad here, but wearing RIT colors now, all RIT, <laughs> the head coach of the RIT women's hockey team. We thank you so much, Scott McDonald, for your thank time. You. Enjoy the offseason, and we'll, we'll catch you next year. Absolutely. Thank Best you. of luck to you in the program. Well, still to come here tonight, John and Gene join us with their thoughts on tonight's game two, and the RIT women's basketball team went dancing for the first time ever. Highlights are ahead. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Tigers being super patient. Long pass up the Brown. Brown going in. Brown fires and scores! Wow! 4-2. Nice play. Short-handed. Mudo jumping in. Mudo fires and oh. scores! It's a one-goal game, a short-handed goal. Vincent Mudo is fifth of the season. Pushing it down low. Sarcona. Back up top, Curran fires, deflected high into the air, and scores! And we're tied! Ratol lost track of it! A great play, a two on one, uh -oh. three on one make it! Can Niagara steal this? Redeker scores! I don't believe it! Ten seconds remaining, a three on one! Well, if you're just joining us, that is how it ended here last night. A stunner for the Tigers and their fans, for that matter, as Niagara scored twice in 46 seconds to take game one. Just a reminder, if you missed any of the Tigers' home games this season, they're available on our website, ritsc.com. Just click on Hockey Central. With the loss last night, RIT is now just 5-12 and 12 on home ice this year, while Niagara won just its second road game on the season. The guys who've had the call all season long, Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio join us now. And guys, we've been broadcasting Tiger games for the last nine seasons. Safe to say last night was the most stunning, I guess. Without question, Wayne Wilson said it was the most disappointing of his career. He's talking to him in the pregame. He's still trying to figure out what the heck happened. It was a game that they were in, com in com complete control of, but yet let it get away late. Well, playoff hockey, John, you expect your team to raise yeah. their level, and I don't know if I saw that out of the Tigers I didn't night. think they played with that edge. We've seen Wayne Wilson's team in the past play some great hockey in March. It was a game that they were dominating the ice, yet they weren't playing their best game. They need to play a full 60 minutes, and more importantly, they need to play with a chip tonight. Well, 
Keys for RIT. This is it, John. You can't end the season tonight here. Well, it's, it's do or die. So I mean, they got to play like a desperate hockey team. There's no question about it. They need to be better defensively. I think in particular, Mike Rotolo needs to be that senior leader. He needs to be sensational tonight. And I'm telling you, 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 you woke up Niagara last night. Don't let it get to the third where it's, it's a, it maybe a tie game or a one goal game because then I think doubt starts creeping into the minds of RIT players. That and Jackson Tycro being the senior yep. from Niagara has the ability to, any goalie has the ability to steal a game, John, so that's why get out to a lead here and then put the foot down on the pedal. He's 8-7 and seven in the playoffs with a goals against average of just over 2.36, so he is an experienced goaltender, no question about it. Talking with Wayne tonight, he is concerned about Niagara now playing with the, all kinds of confidence. You know, Kevin, five years ago, the Tigers lost game one to Bentley. They won game two. See if the Tigers can repeat here and get it to a game three here tonight. Yeah, it was a great call that night from Eugene. Everyone remembers we will see you tomorrow night. We hope we'll see you guys tomorrow night for game three. Well, meanwhile, after capturing the Liberty League championship last Saturday afternoon, the RIT women's basketball team made its very first appearance in the NCAA tournament last night. The Tigers visiting Ithaca in the first round of the Division III Women's Basketball Tournament on Ithaca's South Hill. We pick up the action in the final quarter, 28 seconds to go in what was a back and forth affair between these two. Corey Okada hits the deep three for RIT and they were down just three. Then 19 seconds remaining. It's Okada again from long range. Splash, he had him back within two. Okada led the way with 24 points. After Ithaca made one of two at the free throw line, RIT a chance to tie. They would get two great looks. Okada here missing the first one. RIT would get the rebound and she would get the look at the buzzer, but it wouldn't go. Tough loss for uh, RIT. Ithaca hangs on 65-62. Congratulations to Amy Reed and the Tigers on what was a tremendous season. That included their first trip to the NCAA tournament. Well, we are closing in on game two here at the Policini Center here tonight between RIT and Niagara. We'll send you back up to John and Gene next. This is RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Just a reminder, if RIT does force a game three tomorrow night, you can get your tickets online at rithockey.com by calling 475-4121. Or you can visit the Gene Policini Center box office tonight after the game or starting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If you can't make it out to the Poliseum tomorrow, if there is a game three, We've got you covered, starting with RIT Sports Zone pregame live, presented by Taylor the Builders at 6.30 on both RITSC.com. And game two will be on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 26, pregame and the game back on 26 here tomorrow. Well, we're going to find out a lot about this RIT team tonight here in the first period. It's win or go home for the RIT Tigers. We've enjoyed bringing you the season all year long. We hope we're back tomorrow night. John, Gene, and Stacy have the call. All the action's up next. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now.